Once upon a time, there was a little young prince who lived quite alone in a little castle in a faraway land. And almost always, that he was bored or quite lazy to continue with his routine, his father sat with him and told him a story. Mostly always, it was the same tale about the princess, the dragon, and the mighty knight that killed the last dragon. But that story seemed now far from real, and so when father started telling. That same story once again. The little prince interrupted the tale and asked his father for something more realistic. So, father, doubting and thinking, started telling him one of his anecdotes. He started speaking of a faraway city, which extended upon the sea. He told that the buildings were as high as mountains, that the churches and cathedrals. Were as beautiful as if they were in heaven. Also, he taught him about boats. Boats that carried almost every flag in the known world. The young prince, at first instance, didn't believe what his father was talking about. He talked once again that this story was more of those fantastic tales that his parents told him all along his life. His father, disappointed about the reaction of his young boy, left the room, and all night he couldn't sleep, thinking that his little prince was no more than a realistic and boring old man. So he told his wife at midnight, "Woman, I am about to sail all alone the way from home to that city that I spoke about at noon, and I am also to take our child to there." The married old woman, at age forty and two, thought it a lot. Until at noon, she had an answer. You may go, she told him when they were breaking the fast. But you need to take care of our son. We do not know what he may do in those strange lands of yours. The old king accepted to take care of the prince, and so he started the preparations without telling anything to his lonely boy. He sent call to all his best sailors, boat makers, and other woodmen, and would surely make a fantastic boat in order to sail for the marvelous city. And after seven days of preparations, the boat propped to float at sea. Everything was ready: cloth, clothing, and money. The only thing that was left and ready was the little young prince, who, when at first saw the boat, thought heavily about the congruence of his father. But without failing, at last he accepted, and boat sailed from home, moving all across the sea, watching the seagulls fly, the dolphins dance along the boat, and the thousands of clouds that went and came with different images. And after several days at sea, the boy told his father, "I do not care for the existence of that ridiculous city of yours. I only care." For that very good trip that we had, the king didn't reply. He kept silent until one week later. They saw it. The annons was heard all along the boat. The king fared first, and his son next. Both saw the great city once again, and now it seemed even prettier. Houses seemed like boats floating in the surface of the waters. Boats dancing all along the coasts, uniformed and parked, while little canoes would fish and raise at the prows of the boat. The boy didn't speak a word. He was marvelled, as was the king also, until he told him, "You see, told you that it existed."